All right, it is 630. I will go ahead and call this meeting to order. Please join me in resetting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance, allegiance to, the flag, to the flag of the United, United, United States, States of America. For which it is in public, it stands, nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, liberty, liberty, liberty and justice, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Please call the roll. Council Member Davies. Here. Council Member Dunaway. Present. Council Member Fitch. Here. Council Member Gray. Present. Council Member Clancy. Here. Council Member Trachis. Present. Council Member Harder. Uh, Madam Council Chair, Member we have a copy. Thank you. Um, the journal of the meeting of August 18th, 2020 has not yet been finalized. We have no bid openings this evening. We will move to communications. Madam Chair, we have no tax compromises, zoning matters, or road and bridge matters this evening, so we will move to other communications. Under other communications, item number one, all districts. Um, receive and file, same motion for item number two, and that will be the order. Item number three, second, fourth, and sixth districts. Receive and file. So ordered. Item number four. Receive file and the appropriation transfer be approved as requested. There are second. Second days. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number five. Receive file and the appropriation transfer be approved as requested. Second. Second. Aye. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, seventh district. I'd like to take that up, receive and file, please. So ordered. Item number seven, seventh district. I'll take that up, receive and file, please. So ordered. Okay. Item number eight. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation pursuant to the amended request and that will be the order. Item number nine. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion for item number 10 and that will be the order. Item number 11, first district. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to pre uh, prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion for number 12 as well. Thank you. So ordered. Item 13, 5th District. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number 14, 6th District. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, please. And that will be the order. Item 15, 7th District. I'll take that up. Uh, receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. And that will be the order. Item number 16. Receive file hold on the order of business and the matter be referred to the council as a committee of the whole and that will be the order. Um, we have no add-ons this evening. Um, and we also will not have a report of the county executive. Dr. Page is not here this evening. Um, report of special committees. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we had uh, two hours worth of catching up to do in this morning's oversight meeting, and I want to thank Councilwoman Days for leading the meeting for me while I tended to my new duties as a homeschool mom. Um, I also want to thank St. Louis County, the St. Louis County CARES team and the employees of St. Louis County who show up week after week, um, giving time and energy ex and expertise to help us provide this extra layer of transparency, accountability, and oversight into how we're using our CARES Act money. We started this morning's meeting with a review from our economic rescue team. Rick Stevens listed dozens of interesting ideas for short and long-term investments in St. Louis County business. 
Uh, some of his some of his team's ideas include uh, working through or connecting newly unemployed people with current opportunities, investing in local businesses, job training, um, and some longer term investments in future oriented career and workplace development. Mm -hmm. Um, we all look forward to learning more about the recommendations of our economic rescue team and the associated costs um, in their upcoming final report. Uh, we were additionally advised by the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership that all, all small business relief program grants checks, excuse me, should be in the mail by the middle of September. We will keep you posted. In our public health update, we learned that COVID numbers continue to rise in St. Louis County. We are still distributing a lot of PPE and are continuing to look for additional vendors. St. Louis County has allocated $7 million in uh, public health grants from $8.15 million in applications for healthcare services, mental health services, COVID testing, and PPE and supplies. In the humanitarian relief update, we learned that St. Louis County had 2,500 Chromebooks to share with local school districts so that all students could be able to attend school virtually. We received requests for more than 11,000 Chromebooks. The Hazelwood School District in my district requested 4,721 Chromebooks and will receive 650. Does that mean 4,071 kids in Hazelwood won't have the tools they need to succeed in a virtual learning environment? Jennings School District will get half of its need, Riverview Gardens School District a third, and Ferguson Florissant School District will receive 17.5 of the Chromebooks it needs. My kids school district didn't even have to make a request for Chromebooks and both of my children have a school issued Chromebook that they have been using for this week to connect with their teachers, classmates, friends and, and education. While it's certainly an adjustment here on the home front, my kids are truly learning in this virtual environment and they seem to be enjoying it. And they are and will continue to grow so many steps ahead of those kids in Hazelwood, Ferguson, Jennings, Florissant, Riverview Gardens, and so many more in St. Louis County. Still waiting for equi equipment that may never arrive. This is what we're talking about when we talk about equity. And let's let these equity realities drive our thinking and processes as we move forward in spending what remains of our CARES Act funding and in our future discussions and legislative attempts at childcare in St. Louis County, our own economic rescue, public health, and humanitarian relief. We will meet again on September 8th at 10 a.m. and welcome the participation of the public. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman Dunaway, and thank you also to Councilwoman Days for um, leading this morning's meeting. All right, with that, we will move on to the public forum portion of our meeting this evening um, to remind everyone of the rules um, and the parameters for this important portion of our meeting. Um, this forum is a source of pride for the St. Louis County Council, and we know that it can serve as a positive example to residents and other policymaking bodies in our community. We encourage every person who participates in this forum to speak with tolerance and respect towards the council, towards each other, <clears throat> towards other official and county officials and county government. Uh, as a reminder of the procedure, only comments sent to council comments at stlouisco.com on the day in which the meeting is being held at least one hour prior to the meeting is set to start will be recorded into the public record. The email must contain the commenter's name email must be 400 words or less, less, which is the equivalent of three minutes of verbal communication, which is what we would typically allow if we were meeting here in person. The administrative director or designee will read the comment out loud during the meeting and it will be recorded into the journal. Um, with that, please proceed with the first comment. 
Madam Chair, we have 42 comments this evening. First comment is from Michael Huter. These unending pandemic states of emergency, SOEs, put through by the by County Executive Page are unacceptable. Uh, as is his action without any checks and balances from the County Council. Please approve the amendment put forward by Council Members Fitch and Harder limiting SOEs to 15 days without approval of a two-thirds supermajority of the County Council. Thank you for your consideration. From Christine Hessel, the term bait and switch refers to advertising goods or services which are, are an apparent bargain and substituting inferior or more expensive ones. This unethical practice is standard operating procedure for St. Louis County government. Number one, Proposition P was a half cent sales tax marketed to voters as being for the police. The switch came when other entities like the courts, county jail, and municipalities saw this revenue as fair game in the name of public safety. We are now looking at possible cuts in the police force. Number two, Proposition L sales tax enabled the library board answerable to no one to waste $6 million on prime property in Frontenac for a genealogical center, which could have been situated in numerous other places for considerably less money without public opposition. Number three, in 2018, county voters passed yet another sales tax, Proposition Z, that threw more tax dollars to a zoo that, re that had received 19 million of county tax dollars in 2016. The St. Louis Zoo Association had a fund with assets of 96.5 million in 2016. In 2020, we get the announcement that the children's zoo would be closed, even though it is one of the most popular attractions. That's more money for less zoo. Number four, County Executive Sam Page was illegally given control of $174 million of CARES Act money because the County Council could not be bothered to take the appropriate time for allocating and overseeing these funds legally. Five months later, and only $60 million of checks have been cut. That's only 30% of the money. Wow, what a sense of urgency. Number five. The pulled half cent sales tax supposedly for early childhood education was being touted as economic development. If you were serious about economic development, you would streamline county government, cut red tape and taxes and make the county attractive to businesses. You would also make a serious attempt to address the laundry list of problems identified by State Auditor Galloway. Let's face it, you just want another slush fund for your Democrat cronies. In addition, there was no sunset, no oversight, no specificity, and no public input into this proposed tax. P.T. Barnum said you can fool most of the people most of the time. Unfortunately, St. Louis counters have proven him right. The following from Matt Skaggs. I'm a single father of two kids in county public schools, 25-year veteran in healthcare executive management, caring for seniors in our community. I would like to put on record that after speaking with superintendents, it's clear that our health department has guided them to provide, to only provide online learning. The measurements being used to determine safe reopening of our schools are transmission, excuse me, transmission rate below the seasonal flu, which has a current vaccine, positive test rate percent, which is simply ridiculous, as it was 27%, now only 10%, only because of the number of tests. Seven-day average of new cases per 100,000 of below 10, not achievable, and 14-day comparison in new cases. That one I will give you, but why are we still treating this virus as if it had a death rate of 5% or higher? New data, new plans. The facts are we currently have an infection rate, an infection rate below the common flu. R reminder, the flu has a vaccine. The reproduction rate is 0.817 as of yesterday, which is below a virus seen as active and not uh, under control. The 714 day average of hospitalizations is decreasing. The goal is to flatten the curve, keeping the overwhelming, keep from overwhelming the health system. In April, that number was only about 5% total capacity of the hospital beds with COVID patients, and we are now almost at half that number. This virus has infected less than 5% of our total St. Louis County population. Isolation was needed six months ago, yet with all the new data, we are still isol isolating our community. We have Dr. Orsland and Dr. Newland hosting podcasts on how to open schools safely. 
two top infection control physicians right here in St. Louis. Dr. Remy, a Washington University ICU physician, has also been outspoken trying to share data on why it would be safe for kids and teachers to return to school. The restrictions on youth sports in schools is no longer supported. The virus was nasty at first and now we have and was at first now we know how to live with it. The new data the new data and our neighboring community St. Charles proves that the current St. Louis County restrictions are inappropriate. The health department needs to work with our infection control physicians to keep the schools open. This is causing so much harm to our children and the parents are trying to work, teach and support their community. From David Sabaw. I hope I pronounced your last name right. I wanted to reach out and express my concern for children and families not having a choice to return to school, despite the science and data leading to conclusions that show it, show it is a viable option. Infection rate 1.628 for St. Louis County, which is below the average seasonal flu that has a vaccine, seasonal flu is just under two. This is according to the Missouri Hospital Association. Reproductive rate, 0 0.817 for St. Louis metro area. Anything above one shows that the virus is active and not under control. Seven day average hospitalizations, 37. The goal Dr. Garza's task, foot, task force put out was below 40. Seven day hospital beds with COVID clients in St. Louis metro, 200 and 57, which is down from April, that was around 500. In the state of Missouri, in the state of Missouri, only 3.3 percent of the deaths were 49 and younger, 0 percent for 19 and under. The average teacher is 43 in the Rockwood and Parkway school districts. Only 1.7 percent of St. Louis County population has been confirmed to have COVID. With testing so low at the beginning, we should double that number to 3.4%. At best, the St. Louis, St. Louis County population has seen a 3.4% of the population infected with this virus. St. Charles, with less restrictions on masks, sports, and businesses, has a lower infection rate than St. Louis County. 1.197 compared to St. Louis County at 1.628. Dr. Orsalin and Dr. Newland created a 50-minute presentation on how to safely open the schools. Private schools are open and we have not seen infection go up or outbreaks in schools. Two Washington University hospital doctors and Washington University ICU PEDS doctor claim infection rate and spread are so low for kids that it's almost unmeasurable. CDC local WashU infection control doctors, 50 plus pediatricians in the area, and many other well respected physicians in the area all believe it is possible for students to safely return to school. From Teresa Blair. After reading the items on the agenda, my main comment is raising taxes and taking money from the federal government is not a way to stimulate the economy. It is time to reopen businesses to their full capacity and the St. Louis community rebuild itself. I know this and I feel you all do too. Businesses stimulate income and generate taxes to support the community and its programs. Make the right choice and reopen St. Louis County slash city. Teresa Blair. Continuing with the comments from Angela Evans DeLunas. On 8 11 20, I got a call that no parent ever wants to receive. I was informed that my eldest son, Anthony, was found deceased. I was not allowed to identify him or hold him because of the possibility that he could have been exposed to COVID. His death was accidental and not COVID related. The grief that I felt from his death was worsened by the fact that I was denied access to him in my greatest time of need. I don't want another parent to experience the sadness I went through as my son's body lay in a morgue and I struggled to find closure. Please revisit this rule and allow people to be with their loved ones at the time of their passing. Thank you in advance for your consideration. Next comment from Amber Mueller. I am a mother to three kids in county public schools. I would like to put on record that after speaking with the superintendents, it's clear that our health department has guided them to only provide online learning. I am asking that you advocate and push for the safe reopening of schools. Our children as suffering 
are suffering educationally, mentally, physically, and socially. We know that the measurements used to determine safe reopening of our schools are unrealistic and skewed. The infection rate is below the annual flu. The 714 average of hospitalizations is decreasing and we have obviously flattened the curve. We cannot expect to eradicate this virus before we go back to life. It is just not possible, nor is it necessary. This virus has infected less than 5% of our total St. Louis County population. By continuing to isolate unnecessarily, we are actually compromising our health and immunity to viruses and disease. I ask that you ensure the health department works with our infection control physicians to help the kids, to help the schools open. The harm and damage being done to our children and families is immeasurable. Kids need kids. Kids need school. Kids need a return to normal living. Please help advocate for the children. They need you. Next comment from Joanna Feiler. I'm a mother of a teenager that has an IEP for school. The undue closure of in-person learning is detrimental to the education of my daughter. My daughter thrives when school is in person. She must have to she must have the face-to-face -face daily interactions. To keep such harsh restrictions in place when the data proves that the hospitalizations are decreasing is completely unacceptable. When asked on Parkway's survey if I would choose in-person or virtual, I chose in-person. At this time of my decision, my 22-year-old healthcare working daughter was very sick with COVID-19, contracting it from a patient. patient. She lives at home and is in college. Even with care for someone with the horrendous virus, I still chose to send my daughter to school in person. On August 16, 2020, the St. Louis Metropolitan Pandemic Task Force reported that the seven-day rolling average of total hospitalizations due to COVID-19 decreased. The source was from St. Louis Post-Dispatch, August 17, 2020. Additionally, on August 19, 2020, St. Louis County's average of positive tests for the last week is 7.8%. The source came from Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. The White House Coronavirus Task Force recommends that counties with positivity rates above 10% enact more restrictions. The source for that was from St. Louis Public Radio, August 10, 2020. Given the data, the server restrictions within St. Louis County and the appalling decision to keep our youth isolated from school and the ability to play sports is downright cruel. Next comment from Julia Jansma. The pandemic has presented distinct challenges to schools in both preventing and responding to student suicides, which are the second leading cause of death among 10 to 19 year olds in the United States. And the stress the pandemic is putting on students in the form of social isolation, family financial instability, or death of loved ones is on the rise. Social isolation, Isolation is uniquely hard on teenagers. One of their main jobs in life is developing social connections. Their job is to di differentiate from their parents and establish relationships with peers, and we're blocking that. They're missing an important developmental moment. While the pandemic is throwing new mental health challenges at students, rising rates of suicide among adolescents, teens, and even children was a major concern even before the coronavirus outbreak began. Suicide rates among teens have risen dramatically over the past decade, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Even some children as young as nine think about killing themselves, according to a recent study by researchers from Washington University in St. Louis. While experts are concerned the pandemic may drive more young people to harm themselves, it is not clear what the net effect of the pandemic will be on suicide rates among children and teens. But imagine another kid who had a very toxic home environment whose reasons for living revolved around their friends at school and the fact that their teachers gave them all sorts of positive support where school was the only safe place. Then you have a kid who is isolated from that and is now an increased risk. The home lives of many students are also likely to get much rockier. Job loss and eviction brought on by the economic recession which the U.S. economy entered in February will only add to students' emotional stress. A 
Aside from the obvious that it's harder for school psychologists, counselors, or social workers to check up on students when school is out, the fact that students are interacting with fewer adults overall. In a pandemic, it's only the parent seeing the kid. If you're a teacher on a Zoom call with 25 other kids, you're not going to be picking up on these things. Pandemic-related school closures have forced schools to lean even more heavily on teachers to spot suicidal behavior in students. Therefore, it's crucial that teachers not only know the risk factors and warning signs, but also who to contact in the district to get the student help immediately. Next comment from Beth Nelson. I am the mom to two amazing kids who have done their best with stay-at-home orders and all of the changes, but it's time to get back to school. I would like to put on record that after speaking with the superintendents, it's clear that our health department has guided them to only provide online learning. The measurements being used to determine safe reopening of our schools are transmission rate below the seasonal flu, which has a current vaccine, positive test rate percentage percent, which is simply ridiculous as it was 27%, now around 10%, only because of number of tests, seven day average of new cases per 100,000 of below 10, not achievable, and 14 day comparison in new cases. That one I will give you, but why are we still treating this virus as if the death rate is 5% or higher? New data, new plans. The facts are we currently have infection rate below the common flu. Reminder, the flu has a vaccine. The reproduction rate is 0.817 as of yesterday, which is below a virus seen as active and not under control. The 714 day average of hospitalizations is decreasing. The goal was to flatten the curve, keeping from overwhelming the health system. In April, that number was only about 5% total capacity of the hospital beds with COVID patients, and now we are at almost half that number. This virus has infected less than 5% of our total St. Louis County population. Isolation was needed six months ago, yet with all the new data, we are still isolating our community. We have Dr. Orschlin and Dr. Newland hosting podcasts on how to open the school safely. Two top infection control physicians right here in St. Louis. Dr. Remy, a Washington University ICU physician, has also been outspoken trying to share data on why it would be safe for kids and teachers to return to school. The restrictions on youth sports in schools is no longer supported. The virus was nasty at first, now we know how to live with it. The new data in our neighboring county, St. Charles, proves that the current St. Louis County restrictions are inappropriate. The health department needs to work with our infection control physicians to help the schools open. This is causing so much harm to our children and the parents trying to work, teach, and support their community. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, from Jay Jansma. I am a father of two children in elementary Rockwood school system. For some time now, I have been listening to politicians continue to express the phrase, we must listen to the scientists regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, which begs the question, why do we need politicians? In addition to, scientists are often wrong, especially early on while studying a new aspect of the world we live in. The fact is that there is wide debate about this virus and most scientists studying health do not have any expertise in economics or mental health. The decisions being made by the council are increasing inequalities, reducing opportunities and chances for children and are having a significant negative impact on the physical and mental health of children, their parents and the community overall. The goals you have outlined to reopen schools, sports, and businesses are random, arbitrary, and mostly unachievable. It's time to change course, listen to, and understand the data and science regarding the disease. Yes, there is a group of people that we must protect, but the interna international real-world evidence suggests that reopening schools has not been followed by a surge in cases that implied schools are the reason for a surge. Time to reopen St. Louis County. From Chris Keel, I'm a longtime resident of St. Louis County and I have a son attending public school in the Parkway School District. 
I would like to put on record after numerous conversations with our school superintendent and board of education members that the county health department exerted unnecessary pressure on the districts around St. Louis County to offer virtual to only offer virtual school options. Sam Page and the Department of Health are also using youth sports as leverage to further extort schools and athletic associate associations into complying with their recommendations. This has never been more evident than Mr. Page rescinding youth sports scheduled to move to phase three on 824-2020, requiring them to stay at stage two to coincide return to school and high school athletics in St. Louis County. Attempts via sunshine requests by numerous lawmakers and citizens to provide the data driving these county orders and recommendations have gone unanswered. Clearly, if factual data existed to support his orders, Mr. Page would have released the data publicly. The truth is all data is trending down. Our transmission rates are currently below the historic transmission rate of the seasonal flu, which has a vaccine available for it. This week's data also shows the number of hospitalizations is staying near 250 or less than 2.5% of hospital beds in the St. Louis area. New cases today in St. Louis County barely topped 100. It is evident that the curve has been dramatically flattened and you keep moving the goalposts. Neighboring counties have opened schools and businesses and have not imploded. Kids are suffering. Virtual school was a disaster yesterday and will not provide an adequate learning experience, but more importantly lacks the social and mental stimulation needed by these kids. You are arbitrarily using kids and their families as leverage to force your own fears and agendas on the public. Parents are struggling to work and to provide the, an environment conducive to learning and it will fail miserably. The experts, including the CDC, states that kids should be back in school. The county should stop mandating what choices families have and begin working on how these things can be achieved safely. This is doing irreparable harm to our children and our families and our community and must be stopped. The following is from Josh and Kara Scher. Please override the St. Louis County Executive Sam Page's order for businesses to deny entry to anyone not wearing a mask. CDC guidelines say wearing a mask during prolonged exposure to coronavirus won't prevent possible infection. And there's a website link included. When people are denied entry to any business, this means they were unable to get food, clothing, pharmaceuticals, medical care such as diagnostic testing, personal care such as haircuts or massage therapy, dental or orthodontist visits, hardware or other household items to maintain their homes. People will go without access People who will go without access to any essential goods or care, those without internet access, without an internet security software, aren't knowledgeable about computers, have a health issue that is intensified by computer use such as susceptibility to seizures, migraines, vertigo, symptoms of Tourette syndrome, don't have a credit card, have credit issues or maxed out credit or debt they're trying to pay down. For those who do have credit cards, Sam Page is still taking away choice or causing financial distress. People have no choice in whether to use credit cards online and risk identity theft or fraud. It is difficult to purchase some items that need to be tried on or seen with the eye, such as shoes and clothing. And as it pertains to food, people are forced to let someone else choose fresh vegetables or produce for them. Some can't afford to shop online because stores charge return fees. When items purchased online aren't as expected, people can also cannot return items because they can't go to a post office or a UPS store. Many items are not offered online unless you buy in bulk at higher prices. Business owners are being coerced into enforcing rules that they may not otherwise put in place because they fear being shut down. Please ho help me and many others who cannot wear a mask for mental or physical reasons. Thank you. From Michelle Flanagan. I'm emailing as a concerned parent of a high school student athlete in St. Louis County. Mr. Page, can you please explain at your next press briefing this week as to the science behind why the COVID virus apparently only affects St. Louis County high school athletes and somehow does not affect the high school athletes that have been playing full contact football for over two months in three different surrounding counties. 
that are just a couple miles away from St. Louis County. In fact, there have has been zero COVID outbreaks from the hundreds of high school kids playing full contact football, soccer, and baseball for the last three months in St. Charles, Jefferson, and Franklin County. So seriously, what a crazy phenomenon it is that this virus affects only St. Louis County athletes. Again, can you and your task force please explain to us how it is possible that the virus only affects St. Louis County athletes? Currently, there are zero high school kids in the hospital due to COVID in the St. Louis area. Lastly, all fall sports need to be open completely. As all our surrounding counties have proven full contact sports are not causing any outbreaks of the virus. With all the data from surrounding counties dealing with youth sports, how can you even justify any restrictions on youth sports other than you are a power hungry tyrant that seriously has some type of personality flaw? Thanks for the time. The following from Jennifer Reiser. Children should not be masked. With respect to the mandate put into effect on 824-2020 in St. Louis County, which including masking children from the age of five and older, there are many unanswered questions. You want our children masked whenever in a public or private institution without answering questions we are all asking. Where are our rights? When personal protective equipment is required by some employers, OSHA has a medical evaluation questionnaire that is completed for employees. Were the parents of the children that are being mandated offered that questionnaire? I wasn't. Per OSHA Part 1910.135, Appendix C, there are many items that many people and children would check yes. Did you consider this before issuing a mandate? What do you propose we tell our children when they're nauseous, lightheaded, or actually pass out? I would like to be provided with the studies on effects of mask wearing for extended periods of time, especially with regards to children. What are the short and long-term effects? How is their lung development, brain development, and immune system function and development affected? I need to be assured that there is no harm that will come to my children and that it is completely safe to have them masked the majority of the day. What about all the children that are already suffering from the side effects of wearing a mask? Children are being forced to deal with unnecessary, not sure what they're trying to say here, uh, shortness of breath, anxiety, nausea, and dizziness, dizziness to just name a few. I would also like the solid true data showing why masking, especially children, is necessary. Where does it state anywhere that you have the authority to mandate this, especially in a private institution? Seems like a lot of unanswered questions. Until all of them can be answered with truth, and I am able to make my own decision on whether or not I want to place a mask on my child, I am not in agreement with this mandate. It needs to be canceled immediately. Children should not be masked. Continuing with the comments, from Kathy Coyle, Sam Page is a dictator not heeding medical advice of sports task force. SSM, BJC, Mercy, St. Luke's Sports Task Force recommended last week to the St. Louis municipalities that sports could go to phase three today. And thus far, St. Louis County has followed the recommendations of the task force until today. Mandating sports remain in phase two until further notice. I'm extremely concerned about our county executive acting like a dictator and shutting down sports when St. Charles, Jefferson County, and other surrounding counties did not. St. Charles has been a hot spot of the virus and they did not limit competitive games between teams. Get off your high horse and stop the arrogance. Let our kids play. Parents are smart enough to decide if they want their family to play. We don't need the government. The virus won't be an issue after November 5th. You have not fooled me. Sam Page and Lisa Clancy lie, as was shown with the proposed sales tax increase for universal child care. They had been working on the proposal for years and omitted releasing it before the campaign. Government is not the answer to society's problems. Government is the problem. Next comment from Kate Stratton. It looks like there are a lot of bills this week to either receive or spend money from the state or federal government. Keeping businesses shut down prevents revenue generation. It seems 
It seems interim executive page doesn't know how to keep the economy going in St. Louis County. If businesses would be opened 100% in St. Louis County, would we need to keep taking grant funds for dislocated workers like in bill number 186 and number 187? We also have another crackdown on masks by interim Sam Page mandating businesses business owners enforce mask compliance of customers in spite of news reports of violence at businesses across the country trying to enforce mask wearing. Sam Page, you are making our businesses unsafe. Interim Page, why is St. Louis County giving Affinity Health Care $940,000 in CARES Act funding for COVID testing? Is this in addition to the $2 million you are spending with Washington University to give out gift cards to try to compel more testing? Do we have to spend this kind of money to bribe people to get tested? This makes no sense. Why do we need more grant money for a vaccine confidence project through bill number 183? Why do we have to spend money to advertise vaccines and their safety? Again, parents can discuss vaccines with their doctors. Why are HUD funds going to be used? What are HUD funds going to be used for in bill number 171? Thank goodness Ernie Trachis was able to hold off this HUD bill that would have instituted Obama-era affordable housing rules. President Trump has repealed those rules and will be implementing new rules in early September. This was a solid win for unincorporated St. Louis County. In Bill Number 188, the Democrat-controlled council wants to raise our taxes again. Why? Stop marketing this tax increase that it is for the kids. Isn't this for your social agenda to control people cradle to grave? St. Louis County residents are more than capable to raise their own children. Why should we give more money to the county to waste when you won't even keep schools open? I'm glad schools are continuing sport practices for students, but why are students not in classes? A bigger travesty is that children with special needs not being given any attention at all. Sam Page, you're hurting children of St. Louis County. Next comment from Beverly Howard. I would like to comment on the lack of upkeep regarding the subdivision's sidewalks. I am amazed that our sidewalks are in unacceptable state due to upkeep and repair. When people in our subdivision call for repair, we get that ugly asphalt put on top of our beautiful concrete sidewalks. This is unacceptable. I am sure you're not doing this in Chesterfield in town and country which makes me believe my county taxes are not supporting the area in which I live. Could this possibly be considered redlining? If so, why I pay my taxes as do many other residents in our subdivision, we deserve no less than decent sidewalks that are non-hazardous for children and older adults. I would be glad to discuss this issue further if given the opportunity with a phone call from someone who is responsible for the sidewalks. Next comment from Stephen Schulte. I would like an explanation of how changing the language that businesses must deny entry empowers them. How does giving a business owner only one response, your mandated response, empower them? Also, please justify your reasoning for requiring private schools enforcing masks. What are you trying to accomplish? What is a low enough case number to lift mandates? At what point do residents and business owners get to decide how to live. Finally, I request the resignation of Dr. Sam Page as County Executive. Next comment from Celeste Witzel. As reported in news outlets last week, Tennessee's Department of Education announced it was going to start conducting monthly child well-being assessments of every single kid under age 18 with a so-called well-being liaison allowed to interview children privately at home. The standards for this sort of person given private access to all children, be at least 20 years old and pass a background check. That's it. The parental uproar that ensued was immediate and deafening. Three days after the initiative was announced, it was withdrawn by Governor Bill Lee and the state's education commissioner, Dr. Penny Schwinn. Schwinn wrote, we missed the mark on communication and providing clarity around our role in supporting at-risk students. Governor Lee asked us to remove this document. I want to ensure you that we recognize the concerns you and your constituents share. The concerns seem pretty basic. How dare government come into our houses and investigate us parents as if we are suspected child abusers? Who gives government the right to enter our homes in such a manner? 
but is this what St. Louis County's Lisa Clancy has in mind with her child care scheme? Tennessee State Initiative was created by the Child Wellbeing Task Force, a 38-member committee concerned that kids might be suffering behind closed doors, out of sight from teachers who might have noticed distress and reported it to Child Protective Services. No one wants kids to be hurt or starved behind closed doors. The problem is that the state should not go around visiting people's homes just because someone, somewhere, might be in trouble. As the Homeschool Legal Defense Association wrote in a note to its constituents, such a policy, if adopted, would threaten the rights of parents to be presumed to act in their own child's best interest. In other words, the state would decide if you were parenting your child correctly. Is this what Lisa Clancy has in mind with her schemes? A home visit from the government can too easily mistake poverty for neglect and possibly separate children from their parents. Even cases that are ultimately dismissed can be traumatic for a family. Are home visits part of Lisa Clancy's child care scheme? Parents, please don't support government child care inspectors knocking on your door and entering your home just because they think they know best. The chances for government overreach and abuse are just too great. The following from April Gottschalk, <clears throat> excuse me, mandates must be lifted. The virus has a 99.653% chance of survival. I do not wear a mask due to health concerns. Mandating that retailers refuse entry to those who are not able to wear a mask due to health concerns is not only discriminatory against those who are unable to wear them, but is also a great overreach of power. The local government should have no place in telling people how to live their lives. Masks for the sake of others, when in some cases that mask puts that person's own life at risk, and government should have no place telling stores that they have to change the way they operate. For instance, I have permission from the corporate office of my preferred grocery store to not wear a mask. What are they supposed to do now that the county is mandating that they must refuse me? While I buy as much as I can from local farmers in order to live as healthy a life as I can, there are still things I need on, I need to rely on, excuse me, that I need to rely on on stores for in order to take care of my family. These mandates are making it hard for me to properly provide for my family, and then my family suffers. This is not freedom. This is not caring about the health of the collective whole. If the government cared about our health, they'd do more to re restrict things like fast food, cigarettes, alcohol, etc. There would be more focus on true health and healing instead of multiple levels of restrictions and mandates with no direction to the masses on how to support their bodies and increase their immune function. This is this is not about our health. This is about seeing how far the government can go in controlling the people. What will be taken from us or required by us in order to function within society next? Madam Chair, this letter is signed by 55 employees from the Justice Services Department. We, the employees of the Justice Services, respectfully request excuse me, respectfully request that our voices, concerns, and issues be heard and addressed by the county council and the county executive. The hostile environment that we work under, the mistreatment that we have had to endure, and the unfair and unjust practices that we have been subjected to under the direction of our current director has got to be brought to an end. Understand that many of us have worked here 15, 20, 25 years or more and have worked under numerous leaders and we have adjusted to them all. So when it is said that we are resistant to change, that is simply not true. Many of the names on this list you'll be seeing for the first time, but unfortunately the current director has created a situation that we can no longer tolerate or sit idle while he destroys and undermines the oper operations for his own pleasure because he can and because he has been allowed to do so. He has made it clear to us that he has been given full reign from the ninth floor to do as he wants and that both he and Dr. Page are tired of all the stuff that goes on in this jail. We want to go on record as saying that we are tired as well. Raul Benasco has continued with his record, recorded practice of manipulating the hiring process and tampering with the promotional lists, which is why he wanted all human resource and personnel matters to be handled in-house. Mr. Benasco has attempted to bribe 
and buy loyalty by using his own discretion with salary adjustments and displays obvious favoritism. Mr. Mr. Benasco has had, had, excuse me, has had outbursts, fits of anger, and temper tantrums while he has arrogantly flaunted his authority and has communicated in a threatening and an intimidating manner. We are tired of his bullying and vindictiveness. Mr. Benasco continues to display. It has weighed heavily on some of us, both mentally and physically, to the point we are not sleeping, eating, and not enjoying our, fa our family or life. When it comes to professionalism, integrity, and ethical, ethical conduct, Mr. Benasco is anything but. Mr. Benasco runs the department as his own little playhouse without any regard for the employee's well-being. Take a look at the history of suspensions, demotions, terminations, and transfers that have taken place in this department in just the short period of time that Mr. Benasco has been here. Mr. Benasco whimsically makes decisions without any input, without regard for the operations, and sometimes seemingly without any obvious reasons. As employees, we are taking the first step in trying to right this wrong. We are prepared to provide examples, documentation, and proof of what has been stated here. We are all willing to speak on our own interactions, encounters, observations, and experiences with Mr. Benasco. What we are simply asking is to be given the opportunity to be heard for matters to be investigated and for action to be taken. Believe it now or witness it in the future, but understand that Mr. Benasco is a real liability to our department and to the county executive. Mr. Mr. Benasco lacks direction, ethics, and a conscious and department excuse me, ethics and a conscious, and the department is on the verge of imploding. The following from Cal, Carol Fallard. This correspondent is directed to Sam Page regarding the restriction on the closing hours for businesses that primarily sell alcohol. Specifically, St. Louis County restriction state, in quote, Drinking establishments, establishments must close to ingress, egress, use, and occupancy by members of the public by 10 p.m. Drinking establishment is defined as whose on-site sales of food or for consumption on the premises comprises no more than 25% of gross sales. Question. Why are you singling out small establishments that primarily serve alcohol versus any other restaurant or bar that sells food and alcohol? These other establishments have bars and are allowed to stay open until 1.30 a.m. and serve alcohol after 10 p.m. Patrons just leave these smaller establishments and go down the street that, one ha that has a food menu. This seems to defeat the purpose by the mere definition of drinking establishment or bar. I do not agree with the hours of business restriction for bars, especially a 25% capacity limit. But if it is necessary, why not adopt the same rules as St. Louis City and say no alcohol sales after 11 p.m. The current requirement as written is not stopping what you intended it to do, unless your intent is to put smaller establishments out of business for good. Open back St. Louis County. The following from Armory Richards. I truly wonder what sources, not only Sam Page, but all city state officials get their COVID-19 facts from. Anyone with reasonable intelligence and willing to do their own research on COVID-19, aside from watch, watching mainstream news sources, can easily see that the world has virtually been shut down over a virus no more deadly than the common flu. That is not an opinion. It's a fact when you actually do the research. The list of things that do, that do not add up regarding COVID-19 is endless. And even those who are most afraid of it can't even admit that there are many things they don't understand. Masks, for example. At the start of this nightmare, the same officials who are telling us that masks are mandatory so that masks don't really work, and only those who are sick and the doctors and nurses treating the sick should be wearing masks. The masks cut off oxygen that human beings need to survive. Yet even though it's been proven that the masks do not protect against viruses, apparently it's the only thing that matters right now. Apparently the Constitution is no longer in effect in this country because it is illegal to force anyone to wear a face mask, much less children who simply want to go to school. You are ripping away precious tears from these kids who do not, pardon me, 
You are ripping away precious tears from these kids who do not deserve your tyranny. Who is paying you to enforce these insane mandates, Sam Page? Nothing else makes sense for the insanity happening in, in what is supposed to be a free nation. Let my children breathe, an extremely fed up citizen. From Heather Erbach. Please end the mask mandates. Most businesses are not aware of the exemptions, and even if they are, they will still refuse service to those who cannot wear them. Masks are not a one-size-fits-all solution, and there's overwhelming evidence they do not stop the spread of any virus. In a virus with a 99% recovery and survival rate, these should be optional. The mask debate has pinned citizens against one another in very bad ways. Since I cannot wear a mask for several health and religious reasons, I can no longer support the politicians and businesses enforcing this. My business now goes to neighboring counties, and all future voting will be for representatives to support the Constitution, not those that abuse their power by strong-arming with un-American draconian mandates. Please allow for masks to be optional for all children and adults. Thank you. Continuing comments from Amy Ninehouse. My mental and physical health of St. Louis... The mental and physical health of St. Louis youth is in crisis. The restrictions on sports for St. Louis compared to the rest of the state is crippling, dangerous, and unfair to student athletes. Please consider that allowing practice games and tournaments are actually the way to keep our kids safe. When run with safety protocols, I assure you that they are significantly more safe than canceling sports and leaving kids to seek alternate socialization or ways to play these sports. In the case of sports, you will never be able to stop them. Why not let them proceed under safety and supervision? When you cancel a soccer or volleyball game with safety precautions, the kids then just create pickup games in their neighborhood with no safety protocol. Isn't it better to have them play in a supervised and socially distanced and clean environment? When you cancel high school football, ask yourself what will occupy those students. They will still congregate unsafely, without social distancing and with possible other risk, risky behaviors. With no sports to play, practice or watch, ask yourself honestly what you think these kids are doing to fill their time. I assure you that it is significantly less safe than playing these sports with proper safety protocol. At my daughter's high school, four athletes have COVID. None of them obtained it via the sport they got it via socialization because they had no sports and were hanging out with no social distancing. I ask you to consider that sports in a structured and safe way may actually help curb the spread of COVID with teens and kids versus the fear is that it will spread it. My senior is horribly depressed about not competing in her sport, including defending her school's state championship. Her sport is golf the most socially distanced sport out there, yet because of St. Louis County restrictions, not only can't she play games and tournaments, but can't compete at the state championship just 90 minutes outside of St. Louis County. MSHSAA has released sports and they are happening across the state and five minutes away from St. Louis County. Let all sports compete in some way and for low impact, low contact sports like golf, tennis, cross cross country, et cetera, please let them immediately start full competition, including games and tournaments in and out of region under the safety of their schools. Next comment from Shelly Roach. I was at work yesterday commenting that my nine-year-old daughter now is supposed to wear a mask inside and outside publicly due to some announcement Dr. Sam Page made on Friday. It didn't make sense based on data. I looked up on the CDC and found this guideline and these footnotes. While research indicates masks may help those who are infected from spreading the infection, there is less information regarding whether masks offer any protection for a contact exposed to a symptomatic or asymptomatic patient. Therefore, the determination of close contact should be made irrespective of whether the person with COVID-19 or the contact was wearing a mask. Because the general public has not received training on proper selection and use of respiratory PPE, 
It cannot be certain whether respiratory PPE worn during contact with an individual with 19 infection protected them from exposure. Therefore, as a conservative approach, the determination of close contact should generally be made irrespective of whether the contact was wearing res res respiratory PPE, which is recommended for health care personnel and other trained users or a mask recommended for the general public. Can someone ask Dr. Sam Page why he isn't using his training and case review to look into this? It is really frustrating. Even if I haven't always agreed with Dr. Page in the past, I could understand his differing opinion. I can't find any common ground here, not for children. I have a nine-year-old who is now having nightmares about the faceless men and the bad masked clowns. My high school kids have become less enthusiastic and stated they are sad they can't go back to school. What bar do we need to reach to get them there? Many of our families have had the virus by now. They don't need masks. We are months past flattening the curve. We wore the mask as requested. Now it is about freedom of choice and liberty. We have data now and our county executive is a licensed physician. For this reason, I now believe this is all political. I can't sit by and watch our children suffer for, for political gain. It is heartbreaking and the worst version of human nature. Next comment from Annie Schulte. I have been wearing a mask in public and practicing social distancing for month, months, but I do not agree with a government mandate for universal masking, even on the local level. If freedom of choice only exists when it's safe to exist, then it is actually not a freedom at all. But my biggest concern is how divisive our communities have become over how to handle this pandemic and how much government has contributed to this. When you or any official blames people or insinuates blame by naming an entire age group, under 25 for example, you are using your leadership to encourage, even incite people to hold other people they don't even know in contempt and even hatred. I may disagree with people, but I will not give my opinion a higher value than people individually or as a whole. Please be careful of how you word your comments. Blaming how people shop or conduct their personal lives for a global pandemic is like blaming people who are overweight or with poor health for the state of their bodies. They may be able to make changes to their health and have an effect on their body, but there are a lot of factors contributing to their state of health. Masks may help, and as I said, I can cons consistently wear one, but I cannot equate anyone doing so or not doing so with them being a good or bad person. As much as I can from lack of personal experience, I emphasize empathize with the difficult position you are in as county executive and I wish you and yours well as I write my opinion without malice or contempt for you. Please consider how you speak of people, if not changing the mandates on universal masking to request. Next comment from Heather Burns. I am a mom of three children living in St. Louis County. We have done everything that has been asked of us for the past five months. I am concerned that one person can have so much control over my life and the decisions I make for my children. Sam Page has done more harm to my children than the coronavirus ever could. His unilateral edicts and mandates have had damaging effects on my children. By stopping sports for an extended period of time, my 10-year-old son and my 13-year-old daughter have put on an unhealthy amount of weight. The stress of not being allowed to practice and be around friends has led to their unhealthy eating habits. My 15-year-old son has voiced his concern to me recently that he is worried that many of his classmates will commit suicide this year due to hopelessness. Sam Page makes decisions without giving us scientific facts and no transparency. Sam Page also likes to use the term indefinite, which makes people feel very helpless and hopeless. Please pass Bills 175 and 176 to limit power and time of state of emergency. Also, Sam Page has recently added more rigorous restrictions to his mask mandate. He now wants five-year-olds wearing masks at all times, as well as forcing children to wear masks while outside. It seems he added these mandates after private and religious schools made in-person class possible. 
Wearing masks gives two of my three children intense headaches. He does not take into account that some people may not be able to wear masks due to mental or health reasons. By mandating businesses to require masks for entry, he is causing many of us harm in getting food, medicine, mental health care. I have traveled to several states and just across the river where they do not have mask mandates. I have researched mask wearing and have yet to come across a scientific study that is not anecdotal that says masks reduce coronavirus infections. The coronavirus of today is not the same as in March. We have learned so much more about it and have an arsenal of therapeutics to treat it. We are seriously considering moving to another county because of the unproven mandates Sam Page is requiring. Next comment from Jeff and Julie Wilson. As citizens of St. Louis County with a child in the Rockwood District, we ask you to strongly reconsider the mask mandates you have imposed on the children of this county and the pressures you have placed on superintendents. With such drastic requirements, we have yet to see any scientific evidence that proves the efficiency of mask wearing when worn by the general population. Studies done on mask efficiency prior to the pandemic showed inconclusive results. The studies I am referring to are true science with peer-reviewed randomized controlled studies. These studies, Mr. Page, is what you have failed to produce to support your mandates. Researchers are also seeing the negative impacts of what long-term mask wearing is doing to individuals, especially children. Another important thing to consider when making children wear masks is the psychological and emotional ramifications this has on their development. Yet another concern is children who have special needs such as autism who cannot wear a mask on their face. The extreme pressures that have been placed on businesses and schools to adhere to these strict, unfeasible guidelines and not allow for any exceptions is inexcusable. Again, Mr. Page, you have failed these families of St. Louis County. Many reputable resources have stated repeatedly that children are showing to be very low-risk spreaders of this virus. Only two days into the virtual school year, our child is showing signs of distress and feelings of being overwhelmed. Although the teachers and district are doing their best, this platform is failing our students. Children and adolescents need social interactions, normalcy, normalcy, and to be in the classroom at some capacity. As citizens, we need more clarity and abs absolution from our leaders, and you, Mr. Page, are again failing to provide that as well. Mandates do not need to be indefinite. We deserve better than that. That is why we support the passing of Bills 175 and 176 introduced by Council Members Fitch and Harder. As citizens, we deserve our government leadership to have more accountability to each other and all members have a say in mandates and ordinances that are set forth. Our family urges the council to vote on and pass both bills. The following from Margaret, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Megan Argetsinger. I'm a nurse and mother of five school-aged kids in Baldwin, Missouri. I'm demanding Sam Page answer all of us regarding his mask mandate. We are tired of him using politics to control us without scientific evidence and the abusing of his power for political gains. My children's and ment my children's and my mental well-being, along with all county residents, are being needlessly hurt by this ineffective mandate. Either provide peer-reviewed scientific evidence that shows that masks are 100% effective at stopping COVID or remove the mandate along with your political posturing. I'm appalled that he would try to sabotage those of us wanting our kids to return to school out of spite. We live in a free country, meaning we are free to make our own decisions. We don't need tyrannical politicians telling us what to do. Sincerely, Megan Artkinsinger. From Deb Matush, if masks were kings, we the subjects, all would have a crown. Yet you treat us like rejects, you shove us and push us around. Your attempt to control us by creating a haze is causing the subjects to look at your ways. You answer no questions week after week, still in each weekly session, your answers we seek. 
you don't like the challenge, it's obvious you're bored, but at least we have courage and we're keeping score. But the subjects are restless, we're fed up and tired of blatant incompetence in the council shire. So drop your mask order, develop a spine, open our schools, our kids will be fine. Restrictions on business is killing our county. Leave businesses alone. We need their tax bounty. From Deb Matush. From Terry Deloge. Please imagine your child or family member looking at the computer and then melting down in emotional distress. How would you feel if you had not seen someone you love for five months and then you see them on a Zoom call only to be reminded of how much you miss them and need them in your life? However, you're not allowed to access these teachers and therapists that help you exist in a scary world. Well, I had the torture of watching my daughter cry on a Zoom call and say I miss my teachers. I need my Marquette friends. Children with special needs and sensory processing disorder cannot process the fact that they're seeing someone and cannot, sorry, Children with special needs and sensory processing disorder cannot process the fact that they're seeing someone and cannot be in their presence. The smaller Zoom calls are not solving the problem. I'm in shock that this council in the St. Louis County Special School District is totally ignoring the needs of the disabled. You are in violation of the American Disabilities Act. Have you seen kids practicing sports as you drive by different schools? Well, I have. This is a great injustice that children can can't participate in sports, but special needs children cannot participate in physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and developmental therapies that they need. Our children without therapy for five months end up having their limbs stiffen, their mouth muscles weaken, and their behaviors disrupt families and neighborhoods. How can any of you sleep at night? I'm so disappointed that a group of adults can so ignore children that are needy in a time of crisis. I will not let this demographic of children be ignored by you or the special school district. I suggest that servicing special needs children comes to the top of your agenda because this is what taxpayer dollars are supposed to be doing. I will continue to be a voice for those that have no voice. Concern for St. Louis County. From Diane Unger. St. Louis County was very fortunate to receive CARES funding. The public must have breathed a sigh of relief, thinking that the funding would be directed at those who suffered financial burdens due to COVID. Small business per businesses perhaps look forward to help as they struggled through the uncertainty of their futures. These same small businesses and restaurants and health gyms and barbershops and hair salons and local coffee shops and local boutiques, and the list goes on and on. All these business owners were hoping for some help. All these businesses had contributed and generated money that fed to the coffers of our county, helping to keep the county solvent. And then, somehow, one person is allowed to determine just where that CARES funding goes. How is that possible? How is that fair? And how is that accountable? And just where is that funding going? Well, $2 million of CARES funding seems to be going to Washington U University and a group who are doing surveys. Surveys to determine how the COVID virus is affecting the county and how this virus affects different communities. Interim page. Why don't you ask all the business owners what they think of this survey? Ask them how this survey will help them reestablish their business and once again be a vital part of the St. Louis County enterprise. And then there's the funding that went to Natural Tableware, a company from the Netherlands. Doesn't sound very local to me. And to others on this council, can you please focus on the measures that will not increase our taxes? Can you please word your bills without all the double talk and lengthy, lengthy redirection? It's obviously intentional and try to confuse the public. It does not serve your purpose well. And lastly, to council member Trachis, thank you for being on the ball with Bill 171. Please keep up the good work. Many county residents, regardless of their districts, appreciate your efforts. From Matt Stoldryer, first and fo foremost, I am severely concerned by the power demonstrated by the county executive, Sam Page. Any pandemic ordinance or state of emergency declared by Page or the director of health should be limited, limited in its duration to 15 days and require a two-thirds majority vote by the county council. 
I support bill number 175 2020 and bill number 176 2020. I will not stand by idle watching the devastating implications caused by Sam Page and his team. The people of St. Louis County deserve a fair and just solution determined by a majority vote. Sincerely, Matt Stoldryer. Continuing with the comments from Cindy Winkler. It's good to hear that Bill 188 has been dropped. After listening to a bit of the joint meeting held at the House today, I sure hope in the interest of transparency that you will answer any questions the representatives have of you. You, meaning anyone whose name has come up on the Sunshine Request, the sponsors, people in the County Executive's Cabinet, etc., it sounds like it's without question there was huge money that backed the effort to get this sales tax passed that in no way reflects what the chairwoman from the 5th District represented to the public. Mark Carter brought up in his letter to the chair that monies had been allocated from the CARES Act Fund for daycare, ECE, and less than a third has been distributed or applied for. If there is a great need, then shouldn't that be a focus for people concerned with the well-being of children, helping the providers access the $4.2 million that has not been used? Shouldn't you be helping these people navigate the governmental process? Please look out for our tax dollars. Thanks to those of you who are diligently doing this. Big thanks to Mrs. Days for really being the deciding factor that derailed an $85 million annual economic development tax that never, ever ended. Have a good evening. Next comment from Lottie Wade. I am alarmed that there is a proposal before the council that would direct net proceeds from the sale of Jamestown Mall to other purposes than the redevelopment of that area, which has been an eyesore and a hazard and about which citizens have raised concerns for many years. While it is hoped that a strong private interest will purchase and develop the land, it is inconceivable that public support will not also be needed. I implore the council to reject this proposed legislation and to apply any proceeds from the sale of Jamestown Mall to the strengthening of District 4 and specifically the redevelopment of the Jamestown Mall site. Next comment from Tom Sullivan. Now that the election is over and the early childhood education proposal has been withdrawn, there are some issues the council needs to address. First of all, the county auditor continues to have problems following the Sunshine Law. A simple request made on June 5th has not been fulfilled. A complaint has been made with the Attorney General's office. A previous complaint for not responding to a request for records is still pending. As the draft state audit made clear, changes are needed in the county auditor's office. The initial blame for the situation can be placed on Sam Page, but the council can now be blamed. Another issue that needs to be addressed is the CARES spending. The funds need to be appropriated by the County Council as the County Charter requires. The Council's authority cannot be given to the County Executive as the Council has no authority to change the Charter. Similarly, the United States Constitution requires all appropriation bills be initiated in the U.S. House of Representatives. The House could vote to give the authority to the President, but it would be meaningless. The House or the Congress has no authority to change the Constitution. The Council needs to establish its authority over the CARES appropriations. Anyone listening to the COVID Oversight Committee meeting this morning would have little confidence the CARES funds are being spent effectively. There are so many things going in so many different directions. There are also different committee, commi excuse me, committees and no one seems to know what's going on. There were, there were months to get ready for going back to school, but some needed items have still not been delivered. Everyone might want to review the guidelines for the CARES funding. There seems to be some questionable spending proposed beyond what the Treasury Department allows as necessary spending. County government is being burned with a state audit. You don't want to get burned with another one from the federal government. The feds would want their money back. Also, the CARES committees are violating the Sunshine Law. They need to have open meetings and agendas need to be posted 24 hours ahead of time, same as council meetings. More complaints will be coming to the Attorney General's office. Thank you for listening to my comments. 
Next comment from Maria Chappelle Nadal. Shame on you. The House Committee on Education conducted a meeting regarding 188. The $6 million designated to early childhood providers in St. Louis County is too little. They should have received more funding from the CARES Act. Please explain why your focus is now on the economic development portion that was outlined in Bill 188. Whose pet project are you trying to fund in St. Louis City with our county revenue? That does not make sense. These wonderful people representing Ready by Five deserve service with CARES Act funds. Investment in early childhood education is vital and should, should be used as pawn for special interests due to political campaign contributions. Separately, why do you have an animal killer serving as the Director of Public Health? Why did county government just fund $900,000 for testing in North St. Louis County two days ago, and we've been asking for testing since March? Representative Rachel Prouty have asked since March for testing in North County. Sam Page, you are a liar. You said before the primary election you increased testing in North St. Louis County. You didn't. Private organizations did expanded testing in North County. Why is the animal killer on vacation during a global pandemic? There are many of your high paid appointees taking vacations. Disappointed in you, Sam. Next comment from Claire Hustle. Hello, I have a simple concern. Can someone explain to Mr. Raul Benasco the difference between director and dictator? He is currently turning the St. Louis County Jail into an intimidating, hostile, offensive work environment. Complaints have been filed with the Department of Labor. The following from Jennifer Reynolds. Thank you for the opportunity to write our comments. However, we, the citizens of St. Louis County, deserve to attend meetings in person. It is unconstitutional for you to hold these meetings without allowing the public in-person participation. The comments read by the clerks cannot possibly convey, convey the passion and resoluteness of our concerns. Furthermore, we deserve to be looked in the eye while delivering our comments to the council. I wish to express my support for Bills 175 and 176. This extended state of emergency and orders from the county executive and the Department of Health have damaged our lives in more ways than the virus ever could. My business is operating at minimal capacity. My husband is having a difficult time finding a job because of hiring freezes, and my daughter has to do her senior year of high school virtually. She should be having the time of her life with her friends and making the most amazing memories. All, you all have to see that the numbers don't warrant the response. Our hospitals are not overwhelmed, which was the goal. Please tell Mr. Page, please, Mr. Page, tell us, citizens of St. Louis County, what the end game is. What you are doing is abusive to us. You keep moving the goalposts, and I'm quite sure you wouldn't do that to your wife and children because it's abusive. We are suffering the abuse at your hands. Please stop it, Jennifer Reynolds. From Christine Wasson. It is extremely concerning that the power the power that Sam Page has given himself. We believe that any pandemic ordinance or state of emergency should be limit, limited in its duration to 15 days and require a two-thirds majority vote by the county council. This is how a democracy is run, a system of government by the whole population for all eligible members of a state, typically through elected representatives. Mr. Page has been running a dictatorship government in which one person or small group possesses absolute power without effective constitutional limitations. We will no longer sta stand for Sam Page and his political agenda to ruin St. Louis County. I support Bill Number 175-2020 and Bill 176-2020. Sincerely, Christine Wasson. Madam Chair, that concludes all of the citizen comments. Thank you, Chris and Lynn. Um, we will proceed with introduction of bills. Bill number 191, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $500,000 from the Missouri Department of Public Safety, appropriating the same for support of various Emergency Communications Commission, ECC, Next Generation 911 projects, and authorizing the director of the ECC to execute necessary documents. 
Bill number 192 introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $80,000 from the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, appropriating the same for support of the Department of Public Health's perinatal hepatitis B case management project and authorizing the acting director of the Department of Public Health to execute necessary documents. Bill number 193, introduced by Council Member Days, an ordinance amending ordinance number 26,976 by repealing and reenacting section one relating to a contract with Securitas Security Services USA, Inc. for security services at the Met Center. Bill number 194, introduced by Council Member Harder, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute five contracts with Truman Arnold Companies, DBA TAC Air, for lease of five parcels of land at Spirit of St. Louis Airport and authorizing the county executive to term, terminate existing leases for the same parcels authorized by ordinance numbers 24,489 and 27,218. <clears throat> Bill number 195, introduced by Council Member Carter, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to mm -hmm. execute a contract with Golden Eagle Aviation LLC for lease of two parcels of land at Spirit of St. Louis Airport and authorizing the county executive to terminate existing leases for the same parcels authorized by ordinance number 24,905. Madam Chair, that is all the bills. Thank you. We will move forward with perfection. Bill number 20 introduced by Council Member Harder. Please hold on the order of business. Uh, bill number 20 is held. Bill number 32 introduced by Council Member Trachis. Please hold bill number 32. Bill number 32 is held. Bill number 175, introduced by council members Fitch and Harder. Please hold bill 175. Bill number 175 is held. Bill number 176, introduced by council members Fitch and Harder. Please hold bill 176. Bill number 176 is held. Bill number 188, introduced by council members Clancy, Days, and Dunaway. I move to drop bill number 188 from the order of business. Bill number 188 is dropped from the order of business. Bill number 189 introduced by council member Clancy. Um, I move to perfect bill number 189. Second, Councilwoman Gray. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries bill number 189 is perfected. Bill number 190 introduced by council member Clancy. I move to perfect bill number 190. Second, Councilwoman Gore. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, bill number 190 is perfected. Final passage. Chair, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Can we please return to the introduction of bills? I saw that there were two bills that had Councilman Harder's name on there. However, he's not present tonight. Is it possible to have someone else introduce his two bills for him? Yes, we can return to introduction of bills. Would anyone like to introduce those I bills? 194 and 195. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'll be happy to move those for Mr. Harder. Thank you, Councilman Trakis. Can we make sure that the record reflects that? Yes, um, Councilman Trakis will uh, carry those bills on behalf of Councilman Harder tonight. Can, can I have um, asked Ms. Francis to read those as for um, uh, Councilman Trakis for Harder and have them read into the record? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Bill number 194 introduced by council member Trakis for council member Harder, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute five contracts with Truman Arnold Companies, DBA TAC Air, 
for lease of five parcels of land at Spirit of St. Louis Airport and authorizing the county executive to terminate existing leases for the same parcels authorized by ordinance numbers 24,489 and 27,218. Bill number 195 introduced by Council Member Trachis for Council Member Harder. An ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with Golden Eagle Aviation LLC for lease of two parcels of land at Spirit of St. Louis Airport and authorizing the county executive to terminate existing leases for the same parcels authorized by ordinance number 24,905. Thank you. All right, um, we will then proceed with final passage. Madam yes, Chair, sir. I believe we have one more bill on um, perfection. I may be wrong on that, but I don't know that we got to bill number 190. Um, I, I believe we did, Councilman Trey yeah, Okay. Link, okay. Yeah. Link, it was it. Yeah. okay. Very well, thank you. Uh, final passage. Bill number 320 introduced by Council Member Clancy. Uh, I move to hold bill number 320. Bill number 320 is held. <clears throat> Substitute bill number two for bill number 385. <clears throat> Excuse me, introduced by Council Member Dunaway. I move to hold substitute bill number two for bill number 385. Substitute bill number two for bill number 385 is held. Bill number 14 introduced by council members Trachis, Days, Dunaway, Fitch, Walton Gray, Clancy, and Harder. Move to hold bill number 14, please. Bill number 14 is held. Bill number 76 introduced by council members Dunaway and Harder. I move to hold bill number 76. Bill number 76 is held. Bill number 171 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of bill number 171. Second, Good. days. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trichus? Aye. Council Member Harder? Madam Chair, on Bill number 171, you have six ayes and one absent. Uh, bill number 171 is finally passed. Bill number 183, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of Bill number 183. Second, days. Roll call. Council Member Days? Aye. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trachis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Madam Chair, on Bill Number 183, there are six ayes and one absent. Uh, bill number 183 is finally passed. Bill number 184 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of bill number 184. Second, Days. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. As I mentioned last week, my daughter works at Mid America Transplant, so I will abstain. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trichus? Aye. Council Member Harder? Madam Chair, on Bill Number 184, you have five ayes, one absent, and one abstention. Bill Number 184 is finally passed. Bill number 185 introduced by Council Member Trachis. I move for final passage of bill number 185. Second, Fitch. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. 
Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 185, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 185 is finally passed. Bill Number 186, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of Bill Number 186. Second. Uh, roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Madam Chair, on Bill number 186, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 186 is finally passed. Bill number 187 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of Bill number 187. Second, Gray. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 187, there are six ayes and one absent. Uh, bill Number 187 is finally passed. Moving on to resolutions. Madam Chair, we have no resolutions this evening. Moving on to unfinished business, item number one. Um, this is an important request that has been on our agenda for a few months now that originated um, from the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Office from Ms. Irby. Um, as I have mentioned before, Ms. Irby and I had been in communication about what the best way to move forward on this request is. This is a request to conduct an equity audit of St. Louis County government. Um, I believe this is still an important request and the, the conversation that Ms. Irby and I have been having about was about what was the best way to accomplish this. Um, was she asking for a supplemental appropriation? Was she asking to use the RFP process? Was she asking for an ordinance? So um, this is still something I think is important to move forward on and I look forward to picking up this conversation with um, the new interim leadership of the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Office. Um, so we will hold this on the order of business and that will be the order. Item number two. Um, we will hold this on the order of business. We were supposed to have a hearing today and one of the participants could not attend. So we will reschedule that hearing at a later date. So hold on the order of business and that will be the order. Moving on to new business, Madam Chair, we have one prepared order this evening. Prepared order number one, in the matter of a proposed project for industrial development pursuant to the provisions of Chapter 100 RSMO, Gray Eagle Distributors Project. I move for the adoption of order number one. Second. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Order number one is adopted. Um, that brings us to the end of our agenda this evening. Um, I am concerned about the, the letter that we received from the Employees of Justice Services this evening. That is something that is weighing heavy on me as we um, come to an end of our meeting. Um, I, I know that there is a Justice Services Advisory Board meeting this Friday, I believe at 9 a.m. You can find information about that on the St. Louis County Council website. and. Um, I will be in communication with Councilwoman Gray, who is the head of our Justice, Health and Welfare Committee about the potential of, of doing a hearing to learn more about these issues. Um, are there any other comments from the council this evening? All right, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, Trakis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone.